Moving on now in 2011, Avelia Jenks Urban and her family brought a foreclosed farmhouse in Woodbury, Connecticut. Little did she know that behind the walls, surprises and secrets were waiting to be exposed. This became the spark for her new novel, Acquiescence, as well as a catalyst for Avelia's interest in the colonial era. We welcome you to the show. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Nice to see you. Woodbury is a lovely town. I live right next door in Middlebury. We're practically neighbors. We certainly are. <laughs> so uh, I think we should talk a little bit about your interest in the colonial era because your home is, is so old, right? We so had, it's a historic home. Yeah, we had no idea it was old. When we moved into the house, we had go, been going through some terrible times. Okay. We bought this house as a place to heal, and it was the winter of 2011. We had an ice dam in our kitchen, and the kitchen ceiling got soaking wet. My husband, Jim, oh. had to... It, was, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Okay. He pulled the soggy <laughs> sheetrock down, and we discovered we had these original hand-hewn log beams in the ceiling. How beautiful must yeah, have been, I though, went right? To, yeah, it was. I went to Town Hall to research the house all the way back to 1770 with the original deed signed by King George. George III, and that's really what got me going on my interest in the lives of colonial women. Home. Yeah. We have some pictures from uh, inside the house. We had your work cut out for you. We did. For sure, people people right? come over and they see it now. They don't see the three tons of debris and, and field stone and brick that we had to pull out of the house. But yes, yes. So this, that really got me going on my, my obsession with the colonial era. <laughs> well, I think yeah. the past is closer when you live in an old house. I think that's probably true. Mm -hmm. You just kind of thought about all the other women that might have been there before you, right? Exactly. And then writing the novel led me to do a lot of research on colonial women, which led to my presentation called The Not So Good Life of the Colonial Good Wife. Well, what are we learning about at those presentations? Because it's. Well, it's not what you would expect. No, exactly. I, I'm a history and English teacher, and there are certain things I want to, always want to know the answers to, like how did women, just everyday colonial women, deal with things like menstruation, sex and birth control, childbirth, sickness and medicine. Well, you don't hear about that, no, right? No, exactly. <laughs> so should I tell you some of the interesting Absolutely, things? Absolutely, okay. please. Okay, so for instance, I always get all, the, facial, the facial gestures at my talks is what kind of cracks me up. Because okay. for instance, um, there was something, a disease called bloody flux. All right. We now know that was it's actually called, it was dysentery, and that's what killed the most children during the colonial era. So, and the primary symptom was bloody diarrhea. So one of the remedies was to give the kids a, a pill made of flour, black pepper, and turpentine. Okay, that sounds bad enough. Sure. But another remedy was to take a hot, hard-boiled egg, peel it, and as hot as you could possibly, you see your face, <laughs> at hot, as hot as you could possibly stand it to shove it up your rear end. Oh and boy. that was the remedy oh <laughs> for, yes, and that's how the facial gestures are. Oh, wow. There was always also something called a bridal's gossip, mm -hmm. which was a cage, a metal cage worn over a woman's head, and it had this oh, we're picture looking of it. At it right, right. Now. That and looks it had awful, it really. does look awful. Oh, my and goodness. but it, it had this this thing called a curb, which was a, a spiky thing that sat on your tongue. And there was also a little ring that went through the center. And husbands were encouraged to hook a chain to that ring and then lead their wives through the town. And townspeople were encouraged to then throw pe throw things, especially including that is just excrement. Awful. I know it's oh, terrible. My goodness. Right? Should I tell you my baby one? Since you have a new baby. All right, go ahead. Last one. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to hear so, anymore. <laughs> babies in colonial era, they were swaddled for 12 to 24 hours at a time for six Aww. months at a time. And since we're women were so busy, the babies were very often put in the care of the older siblings. Sure. So what they used to do, because apparently kid, uh, animals used to wander through the house, so to keep the babies from getting nibbled on by pigs that were in the house, oh. they would hang these baby, babies up on hooks. Okay, that's bad enough. Just as in the Elizabethan age, diapers were only changed every three days. So Aww, what they would do, wait, it gets worse. Oh, they, would take the, they would take the diaper off. If it was poopy, they would shake it out, hang it up by the fire to dry. And they, did they reuse it? Yes. <gasps> so when we uncovered these beams in our house, very often we were like, you can you? diapers? No, 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 but oh. can you imagine what oh. it was like? Like babies hanging from the ceiling, pigs wandering in. It's crazy. Um, I mean, diapers roasting by the fire. Yeah, exactly. Awful. Right. And it that's was. really what the book is, is uh, telling us a little what bit about? What the book really is, acquiescence means the reluctant acceptance of something without protest. Okay. And the protagonist is really thinly disguised as me, and she learns that there are just some things in life you you can't explain. Yeah. Um, the, the novel really, 75% of it is our family's journey, 25% of it is fiction. The thing, I, I always was embarrassed to speak about one part of this book because um, some people would be either very interested or they would look at me like you're crazy. We have a spirit woman who lives in our house. Oh. She's been there 245 years just waiting for us to come. She had a story to tell and a secret to share. Yeah. And as she told that story, it helped us heal. And then we in turn helped her to move on. Wow. But I want people to know it's not, it's not a ghost story. Well, we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg. Exactly Thank right. You so There's a much. Lot. I know you're going to be at Hopkins. Hopkins Vineyard on Halloween yes. talking, mm -hmm. uh, also November 5th uh, in Newtown, and then uh, the Miranda Vineyard in Goshen on November 6th. Thank you so much for being here. We'll post that up on our website. Thank you very much. All right, stick around because up next we're going to